All right. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and today on Rock Metal Podcast, we have Blind Channel. They've just released a couple of banging singles, one of which placed a band in the fourth place by the public vote, sixth place in the final vote of the Eurovision 2021, representing Finland. Right now, I'm being joined by Yol to share some more information about these cracking new singles, an album that I'm told that they have coming up via their new home on Century Media Records. Joel, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. Nice to be here. Absolutely. Great to have you on. Now, I guess my first question is, take us through the crafting of this track, Dark Side. Is it one of those songs where somebody came to practice and said, check out this song I've got? I don't know if it's any good. And then you guys just exploded it. Like, how did this happen? Well, basically, actually, it was it was me because um, I had a, like a trap music demo it was kind of trap music demo that had had like the lead synth sound, what is on the intro. And I was like, I was like thinking about it. Maybe it should work out on rock music as well. The whole thing like that, like the middle finger thing and everything like that. And then I kind of, I kind of showed it to the guys and guys were, guys were like, yeah, it's pretty cool. I really liked it. Like the vibe on it. And it's, it's kind of rap music and it's not like the classical metalcore or a new metal thing. And after that, um, I think uh, we, 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 we kind of started to kind of build the whole arrangement on the song. And um, yeah, it turned out pretty well, if you think about like 40 million streams. So we didn't expect that when we started to build the song, but everything turned out pretty well. Yeah, this is very true. Now, speaking of some of those stats, geez, Louise, number one on the charts in Finland, 4.6 million views on YouTube. And as you just mentioned, 34 million streams on Spotify, as well as performing it uh, in the Eurovision Song Contest. So, I mean... How does that feel, I guess, is a question. How does that feel to just be like, this could work, and then it does what it does? If you if you speak about the whole thing, like 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 everything around that song, uh, I mean, when it when it when it was released in January, that like the first impression on the song from the audience was quickly that yeah, this is gonna work pretty well. This is gonna be huge. We knew it immediately, but we didn't expect that when we went to that whole competition it will it will be like the second most streamed song of the whole like package if you think about all the eurovision finalists it's the second best uh, re- uh streamed song so we didn't expect that much but yeah i think um it has something that has been missing from the like the if you think about, think about the whole pop music scene in general like mainstream music right now it has that it, it has that something that is missing right now some alternative vibe or something like that 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 I, I guess it it must be something about the frustration of of the old, like like people who is listening to Spotify and listening to radio and get used to that uh, like modern pop sound. So they wanted to have that anthem for the frustration, and I guess our song Dark Side kinda had that uh, right kind of vibe for that. So I guess that that's one of the reasons why it worked out so well. Yeah, no, I got that vibe. You mentioned the mentioned vibe, serious vibes when. I was sent the track by Century Media, and I took a look, listen, watch the video, and then obviously saw the Eurovision thing, and it's like, yeah, I mean, this is a banger. These guys definitely had this track dialed in, and that's kind of why I wanted to ask, you know, how much how much of an accident was was this song because it seems so dialed in, and then when Balboa came out, I thought, okay, does Dark Side set the tone? And I don't think there's any stopping you guys so i guess the question is did dark side set the tone for balboa i would say yes and no because basically we wanted to kind of show with balboa that because there was a lot, like a lot of people talking about that blind channel is sellout band and they went to eurovision to do the sellout thing they're not the true metal or rock thing and we were like fuck you all we're gonna show you who's true and who is not <laughs> so then we were like knocking out with Balboa and after that no one was asking what is Blind Channel so I would say that Balboa was kind of the profile signal for us because we wanted to kind of build build more like a true audience than only the pop audience that is following us like with the dark side and Eurovision thing so we wanted to kind of have that true fan base who is really like liking everything we do and we were like testing the audience with Balboa and right now when I'm speaking Balboa has been out for one month it it came out like uh, 13 of August so it's been out for one month and it's been streamed uh, mostly uh, almost 2 million streams so yeah it's it's going pretty well I have to say and I didn't expect expect that 
that much streams in one month. But yeah, as as we can probably see, we have a true audience right now. And even though we make like heavier songs like Bal Bal, it still works for the people, and that's pretty cool to see. Yeah, well, I think the word vi- or the genre title or whatever you want to call it, violent pop, came up, and yeah. um, as I was chatting with some friends in the industry about this interview. Uh, one of my friends, Emma over at nuclear blast actually got super excited. She said she voted for you guys so many times that the app for Eurovision Whoa. told her to, to leave like, her. The app said, get out of here. You voted, <laughs> you voted too many times for these guys. And she uh, linked me over to the Anastasia cover. And yeah. She her question is, do you have any more pop covers coming up? And if not, why the hell not? That's her question. Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, we, we made an Ed Sheeran cover uh, back in 2015, and we also made Macklemore cover in 2017, and they can be also found on Spotify. So, yeah, I guess we we kind of started to feel after Left Outside Alone that we're, we're not kind of, we're not we don't, we don't want to be like the cover band uh, was like doing all the little metal kind of cover covers of the pop song so we didn't want to have that kind of stamp behind us so yeah i guess i guess that's one of the reasons but yeah why the hell no because i mean uh, it's, it's kind of cool when you take a pop song or nostalgic pop song and you kind of uh l- like rearrange the whole thing in your own way and i really like that and i think left outside alone it's it, it was a huge success like uh yeah, I, I think it, it worked out pretty well because it was like nostalgic, nostalgic shown from early 2000s. And it, it had that, that vibe that is really like uh, fits into our music and our, our imagine. So, yeah, yeah, I would say that why the hell no? Let's see if, if we got some cool suggestions for the songs, then why not? Uh, I, I mean, I love to make like covers. I, re- I really love it with, with the boys. It's, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, especially the music video for that that particular cover. You guys are in the studio, and I recognize yeah. the studio. Uh, it's one of the ones in, in Helsinki. I can't remember the name of it, but... Uh, Sonic Boom. Yeah, yes. Sonic Pump. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Um, and yeah, it looked like you guys were having fun. Obviously, you're supposed to because it's a music video, but one of the vibes... Yeah. <laughs> one of the vibes I get, because... Uh, up to this point, being in North America, it's it's almost like this overnight success. Who's this blind channel band that came out of nowhere swinging, right? But yeah, there's definitely no overnight. You guys have been at it for almost ten years. Yeah, almost. I mean, when we started, it was like uh, I I guess Ollie, our bass player, was like sixteen. I was like nineteen, and the guys were like around eighteen or seventeen. We were pretty young back then, so mm-hmm. we we started out in high school. Very classical story for a rock band, and we started out and. Uh, we were like looking forward for all the like you know the Finnish rock exports like him and the Rasmus and Children of Bottom and Nightwish. We were like looking like up for them that if they can make it, we can make it. We were like uh, even though we are in, in, in somewhere in like uh, like northern Europe, it's very far away from everything. We were still like thinking about that it could be possible to do that if if, we, if it was done like way back like early two thousands with with those bands. So yeah, we've been doing this for, for a while. Right now we're around twenty five years old all of us on 27 but we're still kind of on the younger side of the of the how, how you say like like all the rock bands we're still kind of young in in everyone's eyes so yeah it, it happened pretty qu- quickly but we have the we we've paid our dues a lot many times yeah way well, back. i mean going back to you know these guys are, are sellouts or whatever um at least from my experience and knowing that you guys have been at it for a while you guys have put in the work to get to where you're at so you deserve some success. And, you know, like Jason Newstead from Metallica said, yeah, we sell out every seat in the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what the hell? No, I mean, think about it. You start a band, you look like you're, uh, you, you look up for the idols you have, like, like we had like Linkin Park and Bring Me the Horizon. And in, in Finnish side, we had like him and the Rasmus. And we were like, like looking up for them. Like, like they, those guys can make it. Why the hell are we not? Just let's fucking do it. And now when we are like superstars in Finland, we're in primetime television all the time. We're playing on the radio like I, I think tens of times a day and everyone recognizes us. I can't even go to the grocery shop without everyone recognizing me. So it's it's kind of scary. But still, we have a hell lot of work to do in Europe and America. And we can't wait to tour America, tour the Europe. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of work to do. So we, we, we're not happy yet. 
Yeah. There's a lot more to do. Mm-hmm. That's that's a, a crazy time when you go somewhere and all of a sudden, yesterday nobody knew who you were, but all of a sudden today, yeah. what's that like? Do you have a, like, are you like Drake now? You have to have a security detail to go? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the situation. Uh, last Saturday we were in, in ice hockey game. We were like the guest VIP uh, like like persons there. We had our own box where we were like sitting and there was like 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 television cameras everywhere. And I remember there was like I think one hundred teenager girls outside the whole ice hall and they were like waiting for us to come come off. And when we when we came out from that hall uh, they were like screaming their lungs off and our friends were like taking our jackets and guys go to the taxi, go to the taxi, go to the cab. You can't you can't stay there. And we were like having some uh, like like selfies and giving like all the crafts but we were like there's too many people we can't we, we can't keep them all so yeah it's pretty scary sometimes but it's still uh, I, I know it's a bubble right now we're like uh, this teen idols in Finland it's a bubble uh, all of those like teenager girls they're gonna grow up probably in two or one or two years and they're gonna realize that what the hell happened but they still love us because we were like the first musical love for them and they're gonna come to the shows and bang those dark side and blah blah and and like relive that teenage moment so yeah it's it's pretty cool but i would say that it's it's some kind of a bubble right now and um yeah but but the drake thing uh well i i can still like i i can go there but i need to have a hat and glasses (laughs) that's actually true yeah well, that's, that brings up a really interesting question. Uh, teenage girls, so you guys are like the modern day Beatles. Uh, girls are just fainting, you know, in public. What's what's your fan base like? And over the years that you've you've done this, has the fan base changed? Right now, it's mostly in Finland. It's uh, teenager girls. Uh, I, I guess they have some kind of relief in our music. They're gonna feel uh, if they're like depressed or lonely or something like that. They can really have the like the help in your music and they got related to lyrics and and everything we do so yeah it's it's mostly teenager girls but there's also like many like young guys having like vibe in our music and uh, it's really cool to see that there's already like bands uh, looking up for us they they want to be like blind channel and they want to be like me and that's fucking that's that's really nuts because i i saw this one guy uh, in a bar in all like last week and he came to me like Dude, you're fucking awesome. I really look look up for you. You're like you're like my idol. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> I, I felt the same way for like Alex Laiho back in 2008 when I was like yeah. 14 years old, yeah. and uh, for like Oliver Sykes or Justin Bennington. And and some guy, some random guy, comes to me that you're my idol. I was like, what the hell is going on? This is fucking scary. But also, it's fucking cool that there is a lot of bands who, who are like uh, having the inspiration from us, and that's really that's really something we we're really grateful for. Yeah. Well, I mean, listening to the, the tracks that you guys have going, going back and, and especially these ones, dark side and Balboa, the production value is, is there. I mean, I can hear a lot of, uh, multi-vocal harmonies that are going on, uh, which is great. Um, and then obviously as well, the guitar tone is fantastic as a guitar player. I'm wondering, you know, that, that telly that I see that's on stage, is that the guitar that's yeah. making that sweet tone? Well, uh, actually, in studio, we have, uh, I guess we have a lot of guitars. We have like Les Pauls and we have Pierre's guitars. We have a lot of guitars and we use a lot of amplifiers. And we, we actually have a lot of time around the guitar, guitar tone. We're, we're like testing different cabinets and different mic setups and everything because we, we, we want everything to be perfect. Uh, I mean that music, when you release music or an album or a single, it's the same thing as a tattoo. It's really like impossible to remove yeah it's, it's possible to remove from spotify but it's still in the internet forever yeah. or in youtube or somewhere someone uploaded somewhere so basically when you remove remove or tattoo it's gonna stay there at some some way it's not gonna be like gone forever there's gonna be something reminding you about the tattoo some scars or something like that so uh yeah i, I see it as the same thing when you release music it needs to be perfect everything needs to be perfect all the sounds from the drums to the like final mixing production around to vocals and mastering. So yeah, we have a lot of time around everything that is really working out. And that's why it probably works. I would say Mm -hmm. I can be wrong, but yeah, we have a lot of time around the uh, (laughs) every sound and every, every production element in our music. Yeah, no, it shows. I dig it. And I was looking for some uh, production credits 
as far as like, you know, who did the mixing, who did the mastering, who the producer was. It, nothing immediately came up. Um, but is there any mentions as far as the team that you guys have chosen to work with? Well, right now we're doing the production uh, inside the band. We have Alexi, the new member, and he used to be a DJ product producer like back in 2016 and 2019 he had a career he was like he was like doing a lot of like collabs with with like different vocalists and they were doing like pop music a lot more than we we did so basically we're doing the whole production inside the band we have this one guy who is like doing the engineering and he's like um recording drums and guitars and doing the studio stuff like like the hard stuff my, setting up the mics and everything like that you want to spark on uh he used to have a band called Santa Cruz, and they were actually touring, uh, I think, America a couple of times, and then the band broke up. But n- right now, he's only doing the studio stuff. So, yeah, we have that guy. And the most important thing, I would say, in the new Sound of Blind Channel is Dan Lancaster. You probably know who I'm, who mm-hmm. I'm talking about. Uh, he's been doing, like, Bring Me the Horizon and Bling 182. So, Dan Lancaster plays a huge role in the new Sound of Blind Channel because... Before Dan, we had uh, we had a lot of, a lot of like different mixing engineers, and when Dan came up, I think with Dark Side, it all went together so smoothly. We had the organic band sound and electronic stuff and hip hop stuff, and everything was like fitting in, and it continued with Balboa. And right now, we're doing the whole album with with Dan. So yeah, I would say that Dan Lancaster plays a huge role in the new sound of Blind Channel. Very cool. And you just dropped the word album. So is there anything you can share about this new album that you guys are working on? Well, right now, when I'm speaking, uh, we are in studio in Helsinki this week. uh, On Sunday, we're going to finish the whole recording progress. We're we're doing guitars right now. And then we send it to Dan Lancaster. Uh, He's going to do the mixing thing. And after that, it's going to be probably mastered in America. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I heard it's going to be mastered there. So after that, it goes to the factory. There's going to be like those vinyls and uh, like like booklets and different different kind of stuff coming up. And I, I would say that it's coming up in in spring 22. Right now, that's the plan. But there is not, not a date yet, but it's going to come out in spring 22. Okay. I have a feeling. Chances are... You'll you'll be back on the show when that album is out, and we can touch base on it then. Well, in case of America, we have a plan for America next spring, and I really, really wish it work out. I mean, it's right now it's it's kind of hard to come over because of the COVID stuff, and we need to have like those like uh, different IDs for everything. So, but yeah, there is a there is a big plan plan for America because we're right now in active rock radio charts I think around 47 or something with Dark Side and it's been played on Octane a lot of times so there is a chance for America really for next spring but before that we need to hit Europe with Eskimo Cowboy we're gonna have like 24 shows in Europe but I really I, I mean it's my childhood dream to come to America and play a lot of shows that's like my sweetest dream from the like early teenager years because i i mean i've been to america once i i went to miami uh, it was three years ago and i remember when i saw those buildings and everything it was like this is the place i want to be this is this is the end game this is where i want to be <laughs> like yeah it's right. very classic like like a like a rock and roll dream but yeah for hell for hell sure i want to live that sweet all right well i'm in canada so just stop by say hi yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's on. Yeah, we'll have a poutine or something, and it'll be good. Uh, yep. Groovy, sweet. So, so far we've chatted about uh, trap music influences, especially being the beginnings of Dark Side. We even touched on that that ugly thing of success, being a sellout band. Uh, metal pop covers, we chatted about working with Dan Lancaster. We chatted about the track Balboa. On today's show notes, so you're listening in, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeart. You're watching on YouTube or the website, The Rock Metal Podcast. Dot ca. You can head over to blindchannelofficial.com, touch base with the boys anywhere you want to touch base with them. They're available on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even TikTok. Yep, we're doing a lot of things in TikTok. I mean, it's, it's the future. Imagine. Yeah. yeah. That's the future. <laughs> Groovy. And then there's going to be links to the music videos for Dark Side, Balboa, as well as the Eurovision performance of Dark Side. So, you'll. That concludes my questions. Is there anything we were supposed to chat about that management said we got a hit that I missed? Well, I would say no. I mean, everything was like 
set up pretty well and we were going through a lot of things. So, yeah, everything is pretty cool right now. Sweet. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today, y'all. Anytime, anytime. Thank you so much.